a lot of television. Oh. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, whenever we have a problem that we need a solution for or a question that we need answered, we always call on this next gentleman. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's foremost authority, Professor Irwin Corey. Welcome. <laughs> Normally, we ask uh, the professor about world problems and national... Excuse me, professor. I think that... The... No. <laughs> now, well, professor, we're on television, sir, and we're being seen all over the world, so we'd like for you to answer these questions. Now, normally, we ask you about world problems and national difficulties, but today, we thought we'd investigate some more everyday items. For example, why does water run downhill and not uphill? The world problems that are facing us are difficult. What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Professor, I want to know why does water run downhill and not uphill? Well, if you will look at the globe itself, you will find that the cylindrical feel or the, the more or less spherical outlook leads us to believe that it is impossible unless there is confusion. And therefore, the difficulty arises in the fact that chaos reigns supreme. The swimming fish going up to spawn. We don't allow that in our country, so they do that in Canada. That's why the Columbia River, we say, goes up the river. The water comes down, but the river goes up. Therein we find the, the relationship of the fact that the precipitation, that's what it is, it's precipitation. Many people think that it's a combination of elements, like H2O. Forget it! That used to be years ago. Today, it's just plain water. <laughs> Let's try another question. Uh, professor, uh, where, where do clouds come from? Clouds. From up there. <laughs> Actually, clouds. No. You know, I'm beginning to understand it. <laughs> no, no, the clouds. The clouds are nothing more than the combination of, uh, of, uh, of a polluted air. Oh. What happens is that the, the, the molecular movement of these molecules would seem to get away from the, 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 the ordinary humdrum and go up into the serene wild blue yonder. There we go into the wild blue yonder. Off we go oh, oh, into the sun. And then when we get the sun, there's oh, no more clouds. Why does it rain? Why does it rain? Many people have asked the same question. <laughs> Actually, what happens is rain. They never get the same answer. No, rain. Yes. <laughs> uh, Michael. Yes. Rain is nothing more than the combination of what was having in the past. We know that it is the gashic state. Comes from uh, a biggest feeling when you have to... <laughs> this is what is known as gas. That goes into the air, and then it, 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 it's like spritching. <laughs> That's what rain really is. If somebody up there don't like us and is spritching on us. That is rain. How, how, Professor, you see all these lights here. How... How does a light bulb work? That's it. Light bulbs don't work. If a light bulb worked, then we would have something done. This way it just stays up there and, and seems to actually what it is. It is a combination of the electrical molecules which get into this vacuum. And uh, there is magnesium in there. And uh, the, the shock gets right into that. And <laughs> the magnesium gets so hot and embarrassed that it flushes. <laughs> well, one more question. Uh, why do people have toenails? Many people have toenails only so that they can grip, so that they can get away. Just like the kangaroo and the rhinoceri. Uh, just as uh, the, the, the elephant has no toenails, because he ain't going nowhere. It's the guy that has to go somewhere, needs to grip the ground. Now, I was speaking to Michael a few years ago on the same subject. 
And he was absolutely flabbergasted because he has no toenails. He ain't going nowhere. Well, no, no, no. no wait a minute. No, wait, wait a minute. Why is it some people, and while we're on the subject of toenails, have what they call ingrown toenails? Where is that person going? They ain't going nowhere either. <laughs> what happens with an ingrown, no, an ingrown toenail? Now, listen, another outburst like this, and we'll clear the room. <laughs> an ingrown toenail is a combination of the flesh which seems to want to come back to the person who originally had it. Therefore, it covers up the thing that is not wanted. What's that? That toenail is not wanted. How can you... Did you ever see a person pick his toenail? <laughs> no, you can, you can pick your nails here, but these are unnecessary. They were given to us to remind us that we ain't so important. Uh, excuse me, Professor, but why, why does a chicken cross the road? <clears throat> well, actually, it's not a chicken. It's a rooster that's looking for a chicken. <laughs> That's what it is. That the chicken it. stays where he is. The <laughs> rooster comes to him. I see. Why is it that women, women don't have whiskers? Well, you've been going out with the wrong girls. <laughs> <laughs> we know. We know that most women have it, but they they use nair. Oh, I see. <laughs> nair your hair shows when you use nair. <laughs> but no, no, women don't have whiskers because of the feminine uh, glands which seems to, to operate in different areas and make them grow out in different places. Uh, a woman, if she grew, grew hair, looked like a man. <laughs> what? Some women look like men. <laughs> and they haven't even got any hair. They have uh, balls. That's the trouble with them. Oh, what is the, uh, <laughs> what is the proper way, proper method to shave someone? The proper method of shaving oh, is... Here, wait, let, may I chair? demonstrate? Yes, do we have a chair? Come yes, on. I, I can demonstrate. Yeah, I'll, come on, uh, please. Uh, you see, years ago, before Al Martino was a singer, he would come from South Philadelphia and he was a barber. But he... No. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the proper way to shave a person's hair... No, no, no. Beard, 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 beard. The proper beer. way to shave a person's beard is to make sure that you are personally clean. You... <laughs> I'll have a uh, crab meat salad and a... Uh... Oh, shave. Oh, we're going to shave. Now, the first thing you do is to shave. You first must molecularize the foam. The fomentation, which is nothing more than a cloud of... of, of yeah. And this comes out, and you either put it on your hand this way. Make sure you get it in the hand. Some people put it on the towel. Oh, now here. First, you shave from left to right all the time. Left to write. <laughs> then, you put a little more on it and make sure that his face is entirely covered so he doesn't know who it is. <laughs> now, make sure that nothing goes underneath because of the fact that we got it. Uh, <laughs> no. yeah. Well, anyhow, uh, you must shave also with a thousand portraits. And you must remember that shaving is a very important thing. Don't worry about it. Now, do you want me to shave him close? Pardon? Do you want me to shave him close? No, just stand back a little bit. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now, don't you worry about a thing. All right, now... The blade it, must be very the sharp. The blade must be sharp. Wait, wait, you take a whiskers off his head. Okay. See, and it cuts it completely yeah, right. in half and double two. Now, all we do is, uh, uh... <laughs> Yeah, take the thing down. Now, take it easy, take it easy, take it easy. 